Open your mouth. Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. What up, what up, what up, y'all? Already know what it is. Your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to that dog in the yard. Today's that, you know, season four. You know what I'm saying? Today we got Omar. You know what I mean? And uh, as you can see, you see the shirt that I got on? The highway.com is my boy Clean. He got them official shirts, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you already know I had to shout him out real quick. But uh today we got Omar, aka Chino. He did 21 years. Um you know, 21 years, one day is not easy. So imagine 21 years. So he's going to be sharing his experience with us, man. Um, so with that being said, let's just get right to it, man. You already know, season four, your boy Pistol, Chino in the building, dog of the yard. <laughs> When you're in that Tampa Bay area, make sure you reach out to my boy Gus Torres, man. If you want anything that has to do with real estate, man, make sure you hit him up. You get the lowest prices and the finest houses, man. Trust me when I tell you. But don't forget to mention my name. You already know that Pistol Peter get you that early discount. And that's my brother, man, Gus Torres. You already know, out in the Tampa Bay area. Make sure you hit him up, man. Sell, buy, invest, all that. Make sure you hit him up, man, because he focused with that out there. Tampa Bay, you already know, it's your boy Pistol, man. Get at me. What up, what up, peoples? You already know, it's your boy Pistol Pete. Another edition of that dog in the yard. And today we got Omar in the building, AKA Chino, OG Chino in the building, did 21 years. And he's gonna be uh, breaking it down to us, you know what I mean? You know, sharing his experience and all that. And uh, with us as far as his prison time, you know, and what led to his prison time and all that. So with that being said, what's up, Chino? How you been, man? All right, what's up, what's up, man? How Welcome you feeling to Dog today? Thank what's you. up, brother? Pleasure meeting you, man. Thank you for having me. Likewise, man. man. How's everything going, man? Everything's doing well, thank God. Um, I, you know, we just recently got out in uh, September 10th from the halfway house. Okay. Started probation. And, uh, you know, just living, been blessed, man. I got a lot of family support, you know, and friends, close friends that give cool. me a lot of love. Cool. And just doing it, man. Just just, just moving, striding forward. So how much, um, how much time you did? I did uh, two months shy of 21 years, um, you know, including, you know, what, the, what they call the halfway house. Right. So, uh... I initially started with a 30-year, you know, sentence. Uh, actually, 365 months, which is 30 years and five months. Okay. So uh, for a conspiracy, a drug conspiracy, a drug uh, smuggling conspiracy, and uh, you know, it, it was it was it was a, a journey to it say the journey. least. So you did 21 years straight. Yeah. Straight um, up. What what uh, what's your nationality? Where you where, you know where you from? Colombian. Uh, I was oh. born in New York, though. My family's Colombian. I'm the I'm the youngest of the family. Okay. So I was, you know, born and raised in, you know, Queens, Astoria, almost almost hospital. Okay. Uh, I left when I was 11. We came down south to Miami. Uh, okay. And uh, from you know from here we moved to LA. I've lived in LA as well. You okay. Know, a couple spots over there. Uh, graduated from Palisades High School. So yeah, I've been you know. And you, you you went to L.A., then you moved back to Florida? Yeah, then we moved back to Florida. So you've been in Florida? Yeah, you know, before, I also, before. you know, I used to do the Texas thing, you know, it was a big, big thing over there. Right, and right. My case actually stems Miami, Texas, okay. Chicago, and New York. So at what year, at what age you went to prison and you got yourself caught up in the 32 jail. years old when I was, I was 32 when I got caught and up. And what was, what, was, what, was what was the case? Like, what, what, what led to go to prison? Uh, it was a drug case. Uh, it was uh, a conspiracy to transport drugs from Texas to, you know, to Chicago, actually. On this case, you know, the, the discovery on, the, on this case was, was dealing with that. Okay, were you, were you were on, your, on, your up rate, <clears throat> on your upbringing, you know, did you was raised by your parents, your mother, your dad was yeah, always there? Yeah, my, uh, my parents got divorced roughly when I was 10. You know, my, you know, but my mom, she came from Colombia first and brought the family slowly. I was born in New York, 
you know, okay. and uh, then my father came, and then, you know, at, at 10 years old, you know, they got divorced, and thereafter, you know, single single family, you know, single mother. You so know, then, your mother then your mother raised yeah, you? Yeah, she raised me. Plus, and, you, you, plus how many brothers and siblings you, you have? You know, we're eight in total. We're five men and, and three three ladies. Wow. Yeah, including me, five men. So it must have been really tough no, for, it was. for, for your mom, mother, you know. Yeah, my mom is, she's a matriarch of the family. She worked hard, you know, for a living like all single mothers do. Right. Uh, you know, you know, manufacturing clothes and working at Chicklets Adams in New York, you know what I'm saying? Uh, right. And, you know, working hard, man. And so then my, my older brothers, you know, they, they uh, worked hard too, you know. So they all came to Florida and they all raised, was raised in Florida. Yeah. And they all did good. They all went straight, never went been, been in trouble or never been in. Uh, I have one of my brothers that, that did, actually two of my brothers that did, one of them uh, federal time uh, and the other one did state time. And he's got a life sentence in my case too because he was, he was arrested with me. So he was your co-defendant? Yeah, my co-defendant. Okay, um, so so he's still in prison? Yeah, he's got a life sentence. And this is your real brother? My real brother. So, I, so, okay, so now your mom's dealing with, she had two sons that went to prison. Yeah, two, and another one actually had their time too. He got out like in 1992, I believe, if I, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so it was really hard for her. I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, raising three, eight kids. Yeah, and and, and them y'all, three of y'all wound up going to jail and getting in trouble and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they were older. You know, they were adults when they went to jail. Okay. But, uh, you know, yeah. But before that, yeah, she was a single mother working. You know, like all mothers do. Props to the mothers, man. Take you to school. Yeah. The, making sure you do right. The whole nine and paying nannies to take care of me while she's working hard and stuff like that. You know, like a lot of single mothers do. You know. Yeah. So what led you to? To, to, to try, you know, to go out there and, 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 and you know, and, and move around the streets and stuff like that. What, what was well, that? A when we moved to Miami at, at the time, you know, it was in the 80s, you know what I'm saying? And, it, you know, the drug game was popping. Um, uh, my brothers are all older than me, so they started, they started dipping and dabbing in the game. Mm. You know, I was, I was raised up with that, you know, with that lifestyle. Um, um, and long story short, you know, it's just, you know, there was no, you know, like I want to clarify my case is, is an outlier case because I didn't, I was, we wasn't like poor, poor, like, you know, like some people like, like projects and nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so there was really, there's really no excuse. And I want to project that, that in my situation, there was no excuse for me to get in the game. It was more, that's what I was around. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's, it's. It's kind of sad how I, I had a lot of family support, and that's what I want to project in this in this interview you. with you. How it just doesn't happen. This lifestyle doesn't just happen to people that come from the projects and you know are, are living rough and having it hard, and the mothers barely struggling to keep food in the plate. You know what I'm saying? And my situation is is embarrassing now for me to per se, but I got to embrace this. This is my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? And what happened to me is I fell into this game just because I was raised in it, and that's what I saw, you know? Not, not to give excuses for me. That's yeah. just something that I just, I took a path. Right. And that's another thing I want to project in this interview is that when you take a path, you got you to gotta be responsible, you know, your decisions. You know, you, you end up being responsible for that, that choice you make in life, all choices, you know? It could be anger management. It could be whatever. You know what I'm saying? It could be who knows what you. So that was the be. only thing that was in front of you. So yeah. Th that, so, just, so you I, was like, you know, like, like I got to get mine yeah, too. Yeah. You know, you like it. You see um, the good life. You see good cars. You see this. You right. know. And you just take off with it. And you know, there was no excuse for me. I, I so how long you life. was doing it for? How long you was doing it before you got into? Your big problem. You know, your, 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 the big conspiracy that you wound up doing, getting thirty years. You know. You end up doing that that business, and you just go with it. You you take it like that's your life, like that's no big deal. That's that's you, you know. And then there may be some days where you work a, a little odd end job, you know, construction, maybe, you know, you know whatever it is, you know, you get le make legal money for a little bit, but then you go back in the game. Mm. So basically, you know, my whole life I was in the game. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Until I got caught up when I was 32. And that was your first time. First offense. Never had gotten arrested before so that. How was that? You know, you know, going to prison and 
like, first time like, and they like, give me like 30 years. It's you know, like, like your signature move. <clears throat> you know, with that wish. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, uh, you know, I got braces here yeah. recently. I just yeah. got them, so I can't even whistle. But uh, let me tell you, man, when I got arrested, it was November, November, uh, right, right before Thanksgiving. It was the 17th of November of 1999. And let me tell you, November, and then you got Christmas, and you got New Year's. That was a hard thing to be locked up. And, you're, and we're family people, you know, we're close. We're, we're a very united family. Right. So, you know, now you find yourself locked up and you're like, oh, Lord, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I miss my family, my kids. I had my daughter. It was, was tough, sick. especially November. Yeah. Christmas time was Thanksgiving, coming. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Oof, that was a hard time to get hit, to get jammed up. And what was the first, um, what was the first place you went when you got arrested? I got arrested here in FTC, Miami. Okay. And uh, the trial, you know, everything. How was that like? It was, it was, uh, it's funny because as soon as I got locked in, they put me in the, in the pen, the unit is locked up and not me and my, my co-defendant, my brother, we, they put us in the same unit and everybody's locked up in their cells. And the first thing they start doing is knocking on that window door. Boom, boom, boom. You're mine. You're, you know, they, you know how they pulled up. I don't know how he went for you, but they pull a prank. Like, you know, like. Your ass is mine. Oh, they were, oh, they were doing that from the cells? Yeah, from the cells. You know what I'm saying? When I when when they let us out, I'm coming after you. You know, you're so scared of shit. You, no, you know, you look at it, you're like, not scared, but you're looking at them now, you're getting your feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got to get know, ready. You're playing, you're thinking, I got to get ready to bust some some people up here soon because I was, I was into, <laughs> you know, boxing and martial arts growing up, you know, okay. heavily. So I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna tell I, I'm gonna make my I'm gonna make myself be known here real quick because if these guys are for real, <laughs> and but it was a joke, you know, it okay. was just it was just you know like that's the way they they, they embrace they you embrace you when you come in. A lot of people really get scared, you know. Right. But me, I was a street man, so yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm, so you was re you was getting ready for it, yeah, you know. But then afterwards, you know, yo, what's up, you know, you and know. How long you was down there for? I was there for almost a year in FTC Miami. And then you went to trial? And then, no, yeah, no, through that, through that whole year, the whole process, we went through trial, and we lost, I got sentenced, that's when they gave me the Through that whole years. time, you, did your moms come see you, how was that family? Family came, everybody, the whole, you know, the immediate family that was allowed to come, they came to visit, my, my wife at the time came, my two kids, I got a, a daughter and a son, they, you know, they used to bring them. Oh, so how, how old was your kids when you first went? My daughter was six, and my son was four. So that must have been tough, man. Oh, I my mean, Lord. That was, that was one of the toughest things because I love, I love children, man. I love kids. I, I genuinely do, you know, and it was really tough, man. That, that really hurt. I, I, Apart from the family love and support that, that we already yeah. had, that was... I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I would definitely, I have to agree. Like, that, that shit must have really been hard because I, I didn't, I, 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 was, I, was, I was a young kid, too. And um and I went to prison and and, and, and my, my son, which is Peter, he was a little baby too. And it was like it was crazy just how old know. was he? He was months. Wow. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Tough, so it was so it was like he didn't even really he, we really got to know each other like through through, through prison yeah, stuff, yeah, through coming to I, visits and stuff like that. I, luckily I spent a lot of time with my kids when, when I was free, you know, before I got locked up. But I, like you, I did a lot of getting to know them and you know, schooling them through prison, yeah. you know, letters and calling them. Yeah, of course. And, you know, but yeah, it's, it was tough. That was about... So them, you, and your, you, you got 30 years. 30 years. In, in you copped out months. to it you went to trial? No, nah, I went to trial. They found me guilty. Okay, so yeah. you went to trial, you yeah. and your brother. Yeah, with my brother and three other uh, co-defendants of, of ours. So, yeah, yeah. Yo, what was your charges? Uh, conspiracy to uh, distribute... Cocaine, you know, in violation of the conspiracy, you know, uh, statutes is 846, um, 841. Okay. So, uh, went to trial. It was a reverse thing. Mm. You know, reverse thing meaning they caught somebody doing, a, you know, their own conspiracy in Chicago. And, you know, they mic'd them up, wired them up, and they came and tried to get us involved in, in the case. Okay. And so, yeah, it was... Uh, it was a, a very fine line. That's another thing I want to project to, to the interviewers is, you know, when you converse about doing a crime, that alone, and if you take a step forward to it, it doesn't mean if you 
consummated the deal, or if you even proceed with it. Yeah, you know, you, you the just, intent was there. You, yeah, the intent is there. You do something and step with it. So you know, that's something that break it down. Is that's for the views. It's know. important for people to know. I believe how delicate that that charge is. You know, mm -hmm. conspiracy. You can get hemmed up, and you may not even see one dollar from that. Facts. Just the fact that you talked about committing the crime and you took something in the initiative or took a step forward to commit that crime, you go to trial and you, you take a risk like me, right. you end up getting 30 years and life like my brother has. Exactly. It's not, it's not it's nothing to laugh about, man. It's yeah. serious, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's so, important. So how, how was that, man? Your, your brother got life and, and you got 30 years. How was like, that was together, then that moment came when y'all had to like, yeah, you know, be separated. Yeah, oh, that's a story in itself. But um, the reason, let me to answer your question real quickly, so viewers can get mm -hmm. an idea. The reason why he got charged, I mean, uh, uh, a life sentence, is because he has a prior in the state of California for five kilos back from back mm -hmm. in the day. Okay. So he had prior conviction, and for people that have prior convictions in the guidelines, in the federal guidelines, because remember, my case is federal. They, they go by the sentencing guidelines and they give you X amount of levels for the amount of drugs. In my case, it was 232 kilos. Thank God that's, that was the amount that was charged, you know. Uh, but with those levels, and then they give you an enhancement for uh, leadership. That was four levels for my brother uh, and two levels for a gun. So he ended up with level 44. I ended up with level 42. That shit sucks. Yeah, because it was 38 and two levels for the gun. I didn't get leadership. You know, they gave it to him. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 but I, I, I'm breaking it down sucks. for the interviewers, you know what I'm saying? Nah, like, break that shit down yeah, because yeah. they so need to know. That's that, the reason why that's how they jam you up and give you a bunch of years. Level 43, because the max is level 43, but mm -hmm. I'm 43 is straight life across the board. Yeah. He has no, no opportunity to get years. It's mm -hmm. life. You got life, you're hit. Yeah, that's it. Until you die, you don't get out when you, you don't got get a life out. sentence. And that's I right. I feel like people, I want to, to let people know the difference between a state conviction when you get life, you're eligible to maybe get, depending on the charge, to get 30 years after good time, you know. After doing good after for 30 good, years. Exactly, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But in the feds, their life, no sir. You don't, When you die, that's when you get out. That's when they, that's when they let their Unless body go. Unless you, you know, you invoke some law that has, you know, come down the pipeline and you invoke it, emotion, somehow, yeah, and course. then you get reduced. Until then you got life. Until life, you know, till you got life. life is life. So he that's ends up fact. with life, and uh, that's how we, you know, we end up with the discrepancy of my sentence with versus his. Um, so you you question something else uh, after that. How was it um, we, um, when, when the moment came? You know, he got life, oh, and you yeah. got thirty years. I so, know they had to do the so, time oh together. My God. So we're how in the was... unit now. Time has passed after sentence till they pack you out. They pack him out. They pack me out, and then. This, what I've been told by other inmates at the time, back in, in uh, 2000, was they, they had never done that. So they closed down the whole unit, put everybody in the cells, and they took him out of his cell in the same unit. They took me out, and they let us, you know, say our goodbyes, you know. I, I don't know, out of respect, out of for whatever reason, you know, it was, it was an anomaly. That was okay. That yeah, was cool. Yeah, it was nice. So I got to hug him. Yeah. Uh... You know, naturally, tears came down my my, my face. It, it was a it was a hard moment knowing that it, you know we were going to be you know separated, and knowing that he had a life sentence, it, it pained my heart, bro. It was it was rough, man. Yeah, it must you have know? been tough the whole and time. E and even though I got thirty years, you know what I'm saying that that's a long time in itself. But knowing that he's got a life sentence and he may never get out, and you know I wouldn't see him again until I, now. I'm able to go see him, but I haven't yet, but I, you know, I'm able to go visit him. Right. But back, back in the moment, I was like, man, I may never see him. Something may happen to him and I may not be able to yeah, see him. Yeah, that was it. That's just the way life is. The way jail is. shit, yeah. especially jail life. Yeah. You go separate, you might never see him and all like that. Absolutely. So where you did your most of your time at? So I started out in Beckley, West Virginia at the medium high, because okay. it goes by security levels. You know, those viewers that don't know in the feds and, and I don't know, obviously in the state like you, mm -hmm. you did. Um, you know, I started at, not at the penitentiary, but I started at the medium high. Mm. It was rough though, man. It yeah. was like a pen. It was, it was a disciplinary joint. Okay. So people who come down from the pen went there, or, you know, if you had issues from the medium, you know, you got sent there. 
So I started out there. So I got to see a lot of wild and out stuff. Okay. You know, you know, it's prison life, man, you know? Yeah, how long you was there in that, that, in that I jail? I was, thank God I was only there for 22 months. And during the time that you was there, you know, what sort of the things that you, did you ever experience or dealt with? Did you, you dealt with some issues while you was there? Oh, or? man, like, I started out there and one of the, we were busy. So me and my brother in the unit, you know, when we were together, we were fighting our case so hard. We didn't have really time to, to talk about when I ended up in prison and when mm -hmm. he ended up in prison. So he didn't really tell me too much mm. on how to carry myself in prison. You know, that's my first conviction. One of the first experiences that I have negative, as soon as I get out in the compound, first thing I want to, I want to, they, I'm out in the, in the, in the compound, they come in and give me a shank because the, the uh, 18th Street gang, they believe I'm Mexican because I, I had a bald head, you know right. what I'm saying? So long story short, um, they give me a shank, they go, yo, you're going to need it here, man, you know, because you 18th Street gang? And I, nah, nah. I said, oh, because we're waiting for somebody, we thought it was you. I said, nah, that's not me, I'm Colombian. So they holler at, at my people. They came seven deep. They embraced me. They, you know, they said, I said, yo, listen, they just gave me this shank, man. Because I had my bedroll. I put it in my <laughs> bedroll. Because I was like, yo, if they offering me, it's, it's popping like that here. I just took it. I didn't ask any questions. Yeah. You know? So I told them, yo, what's up with this shank? They just hand me, oh, no, no, you don't need it. We got, we, we're good here. Uh, give it back to me and I'll take, you know. I said, yo, tell them I got them. You know how we do commissary yeah. stuff. You know what I'm saying? Tell them I got them. When I get commissary, I'm going to situate them, and uh, I appreciate them offering me that. I didn't know, you know, how it was popping over here, so I took it. He goes, no, no, no problem. Took it back. My, my people, you know, with Colombians, you know, I don't know if you, if you remember correctly in the feds, Colombian are very respected. I love Colombians, bro. <laughs> so I was respected in prison being Colombian, you know what I'm saying, the way I carried myself. And, uh, bro, long story short, you know, that's how it started at the medium high, you know. And, yeah. Uh, was, so no altercations while you was there. No altercations, thank God, not with me personally. Did you seen some crazy. What's oh, the worst, the worst thing that you ever seen in there? Man, the the worst thing, and, and you know everybody knows this from the TV shows, is you know when you gamble, and if you don't do the right thing while you're gambling, if you cheating, you are doing some shiesty shit, it's gonna happen. And I would happen to be watching a big uh, card game. And they gambling, they gambling big money, you know. And wow. some guy got caught cheating on the cards. Man, they 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 called him out on it, and before you know it, some some dude that was right behind him with a shank about this long, bro, just right here, called him that caught him right here in the back, the like that, like by the shoulder. I saw that thing coming out because I was right, I was kind of like where you were at at the angle. I saw that shit pop right up on this side. I was like. Ooh. Right back away and disappeared into the sunlight because I didn't want to get involved. You yeah, know of what I'm course. Saying? You know, seals it, came. Seals come running. Lock everybody up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know they put them down. No shooting from the towers or nothing. But you right. know, it, it got it got crazy. That was one of the one of the violent things that I saw there when so, I saw that shack. So, wow. So how long you was there? Twenty four months, you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Twenty two months. Twenty two months. Where were you went from there? From there, I dropped to the medium in Coleman, Florida. And uh, I was there for six years at the meeting. Okay, so what'd you, what'd you do while you was Man, there? From the beginning, from when I got to, to Beckley, I just wanna say to answer your question was I got into law heavily. Actually, from, from when I was fighting my case, I, had, I got into law. Okay. Studying my case, reading up, reading up, you know, you know what they call a jailhouse lawyer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I dropped to the meeting, I continued with that, and I was helping, you know, by now, I'm helping other inmates. Okay. You know, filing motions. I helped out a lot of inmates with their time. I helped them get their time reduced. I was in the library, living, breathing that library. Okay. Heavily. Oh, shit. So you was doing your thing. You yeah. was helping, you was, you, you was helping a lot of brothers. I was brothers. hustling, too, you know. You know, everybody in prison, that's another thing I want to, you know, let yeah, people yeah. know is, in prison, everybody got a little hustle. Some people may be cleaning, you know, cells. Other people may be cooking burritos and pizzas and selling it. You know, you, you remember. And you was the jailhouse you know, lawyer. I was a jailhouse lawyer, and I became a, one of the top notch jailhouse lawyers. Mm. I, I used to get letters from other prisons, including, you know. Okay. And uh, I helped a lot of people. Thank God, including myself. You know cool. What I'm you know, and uh, it was, it was. Uh, so the six years that you was there, that's what you did? That's what I did. The whole day, even in uh, Beckley, was Any Virginia. other program? 
I took a lot of different courses. Yeah, like you what? Know, like, you know, different, uh, you know, how to, you know, clean and buff floors, how to uh, become a mentor, uh, speaking, you know, different different courses that they would offer. Yeah, because you know? a lot of us, you know, a, a lot of us, unfortunately, don't go with that mindset. You know what I'm saying? That you, right. you, you was able to be strong, to, to be a mentor, to be a, a jailhouse lawyer. A lot of us have mental health. They come from the slums. You know, they, they, they moms is not educated. They, that's the only person that's there for them. You know, and just, and this, and they never realize that they really had issues. So they go to prison and the issues still exist. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, at least you was, you know, you were strong enough to be a mentor. A lot of people don't, a lot of brothers don't go to prison and they, they need help. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, you know, absolutely. You know, and I know, you, I know you probably experienced plenty of, you know, of, of scenes or people in there where they, you know, either on pills or mental health is really big, man. And, and we need to address that in a lot no, of ways. I, I agree. I think that's an important uh, part of this, of this interview. I want to add that, um, like I said earlier, um, I had a lot of family support. I had a, you know, we weren't from a poor, you know, broke, you know, neighborhood and like that. So I want to add that you can have mental issues even as a person like myself mm -hmm. that didn't come from, from that, right? And one of the things is it's easy to get anger issues because in prison, once you go in there after a while, you're dealing with a lot of knuckleheads, right? right? And you're dealing with those gentlemen and kids because there's a lot of young cats mm -hmm. in prison. Mm -hmm. All the cats that have those issues mm -hmm. by gr growing up, raised, now I'm dealing with them. So at all times you gotta you gotta put respect, you know, and you fall into that. And the, a, a, a mental issue that you can easily get is you gotta constantly be stopping people coming sideways at you, cause now you got people around you. You're being tested all day. Being tested all day. is a sign of weakness, and so you you don't realize you get this pattern of of this of this. I don't want to call it anger, but it's like, you know, you constantly... You start building this rage. This and rage, yeah. you know? So now, one of the things that I want to I wanna add to that, because it's, it's true, there's a lot of mental health issues in, in prison, you know, some, you know, from, from your livelihood and all that, but even in prison, like, I didn't have those issues, but, you know, people talking sideways at me, I had to constantly, you know, not constantly, but at, there's situations where you got to stop people, you know, at their tracks. And now when I got out, I had certain like family members or friends, you know, want to talk to you in a certain kind of way and that thing triggers. So uh, that could be a mental health issue in itself. And I'm sure I, we talk about that. that a little bit about that later nah, on. No, that was, that, that, yeah. you're right. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's a good point because, you know, cause, you know, you're used to that lifestyle. You and know, even I, though I had respect in prison because yeah. I'm a jailhouse lawyer, I'm Colombian, and this and that, but regardless, you know, there's some guys that don't know you. They don't know you from. There's a lot of shit. There's a lot of people. Like, there was 1,800 men in, 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 in those prisons that I was in. You know, the, my, the only reason I bring up the mental health is because it, it's not addressed. When you go to prison, you could, you, could, you could try to hang yourself, and based off you trying to hang yourself, they give you pills. You don't get nothing, but a, a, you might get a psychiatrist to speak to you two or three times out the week, but the chat is really quick and the, the psychiatrists look like they need some fucking counseling. Yeah. So you be confused about the whole vibe. So you don't really get that help. You know what I'm saying? Right. Then you come home and like, like, like you said, you, don't, you come home, you built this character, even for those individuals that never had no mental health, you, 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 you built, you have Absolutely. this built up inside from being a certain way, Absolutely. from being gone so long. Now you in the street and your your your, your cousin comes up to you. And he just grabs you and, you and rustles you up or something. And be like, "What's up, punk?" Yeah, you know, yeah, and you yeah. be like, "Whoa!" You know what I'm saying? You be like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and you you have to catch yourself. Or if it's not physical, it could be conversation. Maybe you know. Yeah, they might say something or slick or something slick or whatever. Out of the mouth, and you're like, you take offense to that. You know. That's why it's important. You know, it's important that 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 for for, for brothers that come home that they get some sort of, you know, help. You know what I'm saying? They should be able to, 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 you should be able to come home and get that option to get some kind of mental help. Yeah, but you, know, they, if you, but need you don't it. get it. You, don't you, get you know it. what I'm saying? Because you come home and you fucked up. Yeah. You know, a lot of people can't, they can't accept going back to prison and being free, jumping on a train, taking a cab, 
uh, speaking or living with somebody. You know, yeah. some people want to live by they, by themselves because they've been they so caught up in living on their own right. that they 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 funny style how they live how they how place they, their yeah, sneakers. Yeah. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's 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 difficult when you when you get out and you you are living with family or or somebody. It could be somebody. You know, I got a lot of support, a lot of love. In you my was family. blessed, man. You I got was you know, blessed, that's and good, I continue man. to be blessed. Just yesterday, I got three calls from, 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 from actually four nephews between nephews and nieces checking up on me. That's, that's great, that's man. beautiful, and I love that about my family. Yeah, that's you good. know, I, I swear to God, I'm so. You blessed. need that support system, yeah, and I, especially and I for the brothers that come home. That don't have it. Oh, you Lord. need that support system. Whether you have, you know, you, you it's, it's always good to have somebody. It's easy to happen, man. It's easy to come out being a little funny. You know, I can, you know, I can see that. You know. Yeah, well, my, our plan, our plan is to, you know, we're gonna definitely, you know, we're gonna as the as the up and coming episodes come up, and we on four on season four, you know, um, we definitely gonna touch, you know, on, on mental health and all that, and we definitely trying to come up with some sort of some sort of structure. For the future, so when brothers come home, we can have we can have something for them, man, some, some you sort know of. What, what you do, my man, is so admirable. I want to give, I want to commend you for all this beautiful it, man. work, man. Not too many people. I saw a lot of interviews, and I don't remember too many people commending you for this beautiful work that you're doing because just conversating about it and projecting. If we were to help one person out in the free world, one to safeguard them from what we did this time in federal prison or state, it'll save their family a lot of heartache because I know it caused a lot of heart pain Absolutely. for my family. Oh my Lord, and that's, my daughter and son. And that's why this platform was created. It was created for that right here, for, for us to be man. able to speak to the youth, let them know that prison is not it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't care how cool you are or what, what, yeah. what you, how you may feel at 21, you know, or at 30 and all that, but you gotta, you know, there's always consequences. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. And people aggrandize this, this life of crime and, 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 and making money, having money to show off and live. But you know what? I bet you all the families and all the people that did time, if they can trade that money mm. for them keeping them at home and having them around them, having them kids. Big just, time. They would change it in a heartbeat, including myself. Big time. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? It's a path we took and I'm sure there's a lot of journeys that because we lived that, now look at you. Absolutely. You know? We just trying to get back, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what we try to do. And we do it by, 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 by creating platforms like this. You know what yeah, I'm saying? absolutely. And having stories, you know, like yours, you know, legendary stories that you be able to wake somebody up. You know, you might have a, a young Colombian out there that might just be like, he thinking, oh, that's no, that's, that don't fit for me. No. Because I'm... Colombia is not rocking like that. No, this is for everybody. Everybody, including you know myself. They people before I got arrested was sending me letters that they had gotten arrested. Yo, they were trying to tell me stop what I'm doing, trying to you know yeah. guide me. Bro, it went in one ear and came out the other. Mm. And that's what I'm thinking. I hope, I hope, I swear, I pray that somebody out there, if they get in this message that they really consider it because let me tell you, man, they were giving out a lot of time, all right? And it's no joke. You're going to break family up, your kids, your wife, your mom, your family, immediate family. It's, it's a separation, and, and, and you don't need it, man. You don't need that, you know? There's a lot of money to be made legally, man. Absolutely. You know, and, and you're capable. Like, when I, was in, when I went to prison, I used to read a lot. I, you know, educate myself. I became an autodidactic. Just reading and trying to get my grammar better so when I file these motions, like it could be well read, mm -hmm. you know, convey a, a better expression, language, language to, to cut a, across, mm -hmm. you know, my point. And you think there was a, a grammar class? There was some. Yo, let's give it up for Cheeto, man. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. There was there was some, but man, reading those those books and those magazines and getting that dictionary and 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 you know it just, shit. you know what I'm saying that's, that's right. how you get it man you get it and anybody in the street now with this Google this is my my new best friend right. and when I was in prison I had that thirst of knowledge you know yeah. you looking and reading and getting all this knowledge you know that's good and, man and hopefully people can understand that you're out here you are free get get a, you know this there's, there's some businesses you can do out here man it's, Absolutely. it's, 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 it's a lot of listen man you can do good when you want to yeah you don't you don't have to be fucked up that's a poor excuse 
Yeah. We living in a whole different times. This is Absolutely. 2021, bro. You get me? Yeah. You could do you could make money off all kind of shit. It's always a way. So, you know, that's that's the least of, you know what I mean? If you you if you feel if that's the route you want to take, they just know the repercussions is not is going to You know what I mean? You already know. You already know, man. But with that being said, you know, I want to ask you about prison reform. Absolutely. Do you think that, you know, I mean, what you feel about it? You think it's necessary, you know, prison reform? My God, I, I absolutely necessary. And I, and, I, and I believe it starts while you're in prison. Mm -hmm. Like I was just explaining, you know, reading and reading and getting dictionaries and taking these courses. Because I already envisioned myself from back in prison waiting to, for this moment to get See, out. See, but that was something that you took upon yourself to do. Absolutely. Now, we're talking about as far as prison reform to... to, 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 to to, to put that pressure on the administration, oh, on, on the system. Congress. So, 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 so we be able to get that, get that help that we need, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Whether it's mental health, education, but apply it to where you have to do that. You right. have to get that because we really trying to get you together before you yeah. go back to society. This, they, they've taken some steps. They did the First Step Act. I remember, you know, that was the last... Um, uh, law, you know, that uh, Trump passed, uh, but I believe that they got to go to the second step. And I know the funds, they got to, you know, it's, it's, it's a process, but it's so important that they, they really realize that all this time that, that inmates are getting, it, it's just draconian. It's just too lengthy. And these courses, they, they, they help and, you know, help a, a person grow and get knowledge and, you know, better themselves mm -hmm. but regardless the fact that they also give so much time mm -hmm. it's just it's not it's just not just for for a lot of the crimes some people doing petty corner drug dealing you know and they get in 30 years because they are career criminals yeah you know what i'm saying stuff like that that's 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 and i know that a lot of that has changed a lot of shit have to change but they we, still we, we have, have a long way yeah long we way got a long ways man and, and they should really consider that they do these laws to, to lower, like a life sentence for uh, our case, non-violent, zero violence, just conversation. We didn't make a dollar out of this case, the, the discovery of this case. My brother's got a life sentence. He ain't never getting out. He never committed no violence. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was his second conviction. Gr I grant him that. But life for conversation, just because we chose to proceed to trial, exercise our right, Sixth Amendment jury trial, yeah, right? Yeah. They hammer us because they want to set an example. Of course. But that example doesn't justify that, you know? No. And, and I get it the, through, through the family and our nephews and nieces, they're probably expressing what the government wants is to send a message. Yeah, of course. But it's still unfair to somebody to have a life sentence for, of course. for something like that, you know? I think it's that's It's not important. like you kill somebody. Nothing, absolutely It's not like you nothing. rape somebody. Those are the people, especially for those that, you know, yeah. With situations where like like that, they got so much other drug is is a, is a disease. Whether yeah. you sell it, whether you you is a disease. So those you would think that they, you won't get life for stuff like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but anyway, Chino man, I want to just take the moment to thank you, man. Thank Appreciate you. No, having no, you. I, what I want yeah, to I want to ask you, how long you been home? I been I got home September 10th. Uh, what I'm you working, doing? I've been Let's working, talk about I've the been, good stuff. What you, you doing? I've been, I've been I was working with Puppy Place USA for a little bit with you know with a beautiful lady, Karina Martinez. Uh, thereafter, her son, uh, she recommended that I work with her son, uh, Miami Auto Collections. I've been working at the dealer. Okay. You know, at that dealer, uh, it's been going well. I've been learning the game on cars. A lot of money to be made on used cars. It's, it's good, it's, 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 that's a good business, man. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. And uh, my nephew, Andres Ochoa, who is here working at this moment, he's the one that, that Connected me with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't, I didn't come before because I, 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 I found out about your show. You know, you're an ex-felon yourself, and mm -hmm. I couldn't associate myself with ex-felons. Right. So, but I, now I got uh, permission from my probation officer. She's very strict. So if I'm not, if, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm off parole, you still can't talk to me. No, I can't talk to you because I'm on probation. So since I'm on probation, I'm not allowed to talk to any ex-felon. No, so um, before you came on my sh uh, on this show, on this platform, Dog in the Yard, you, was, you had to ask probate, you had to ask your probation officer if you was... Okay. Absolutely, because I knew that you was an ex-felon. So okay. for having said that, you know, I, I, didn't, I'm, I don't want no problems. I'm trying to do everything. Nah, we, 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 listen, we here straight, 
Shout out to your probation officer. Appreciate, you know, allowing them to come. You know, this 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 platform is for to to give that message out there that prison, you know, and jail and all that shit is not worth not all that all. street running around thinking you know it's not it. Prison is not the place to be. You know, so it was important to have brothers like you on Thank my you. show. Thank you. you know and what I, I'm saying? And I, when I heard what the show was about, that meaning that projecting that message. I'm all for that because if we can change a few, a handful to avoid them doing all this crazy insanity that we went through, mm -hmm. that would be a blessing right there. And hopefully a, a, a family member can project to somebody that's in prison and mm -hmm. tell them, man, listen, read, school yourself. Now is the time that you get this, you know, right. to, to, to start making a change. Don't be a knucklehead all your life. Because, you know, it, it's, when you get back out here, it's easy to violate course like this in a heartbeat you violate it's so easy to go to prison absolutely and it's so hard to get out absolutely absolutely so so with that but chino man it was a pleasure man you know what i'm saying i, I want to thank you for coming through i'm definitely going to have you on my future uh uh shows thank you i'm gonna get you i'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a holler probably another year from now I'll get you back on and see how sure. you're doing then sure my man you know what i'm sure saying thing. Sure. So, my my nephew's been teaching me this game, so you know okay. I may I may be able to work with him some more even on your show. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Let's so, go. Uh, you know, shout out to shout out to Chino Sound man. Sound Ninja Productions. There it is. You already right know, man. In the building, that dog in the yard, and you already know. Y'all talk. Your boy Pistol. Let's get at me. All right. <laughs> what up? What up? What up? What up, people? You already know. It's your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to that dog in the yard, and um. As you see, you know, we had Chino in the building, you know, Chino did them 21 years. Uh, he's out on parole now. He has a great support from his family, you know, which was all ha which is great because a lot of people come home, they don't have no support from no one. You know what I'm saying? And that's how they wind up getting lost and you already know. Next thing you know, they either on drugs or they're back in prison or die or they get killed. So um, I'm happy that, you know, Chino got that support after them 21 long years, you know, you know, and it was hard for him. You know, as you can see, he left his brother behind. You know what I'm saying? You know, they was together. You know, that which is, you know, your brother is like that comfort zone, man. You know, you got each other. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, and um, I know it was crazy, complicated, and real difficult for him to leave his brother behind because his brother has life in prison. So um, I want to just, you know, thank Chino very much, man. Thank you so much, Chino, for coming through. Appreciate having you. And you already know, this is your house, man. You already know, dog in the yard. Get at me, your boy Pistol. Stars all in my rings. She don't move unless it's bands, but the hood is ain't no.